We never knew Billy or Duke, Nina, until they reached out to us and they asked whether they could help. And it's it's amazing what can happen when you're doing something that you truly believe in and then other people start joining you. You can change things, but you've got to try sooner than we do. It, had, it took the death of our son, our only son, for us to realize what was happening. And right now, Joyce um, is going to be reading some of Jeff's words from a journal that he wrote when he was over in the Middle East. Uh, my son was 18 years old when he was aggressively uh, recruited. He was a freshman in college and uh, had no idea at all about the military. And we certainly didn't. We certainly didn't want him to go. Uh, but a recruiter took him overnight and he signed on the dotted line. And he had deferment until the following May at the end of his, his freshman year of college. Um, the time went very quickly. He really didn't want to go when May came. But he did. He did his boot camp, he did his combat training, went back to college, then we had 9-11. And uh, they were basically on alert until uh, fall of 2000. And by January of 2003, Jeffrey was uh, activated. He was in the Marine Reserves at that time doing his weekends. He went to Kuwait, he went to Iraq. Uh, he was he was in the initial invasion in March. He returned 22 while he was over in, in Kuwait, the day before the, the war started. Now on that day, he wrote, this was Thursday, March 20th. He said, at t this was a journal that he had started while he was there. At 10.30 p.m., a scud landed in our vicinity. We were just falling asleep when a shock wave rattled through our tent. The noise was just short of blowing out your eardrums. Everyone's heart truly skipped a beat, and the reality of where we are and what's truly happening hit home. It's now 11.30, and we still have no word of casualties, but from the power encompassed in that blast, the fear of the worst for many of us is very real. We are now trying to get some sleep for at least a couple of hours, but anxiety is high, and sleep seems close to impossible. A friend named Hazel, who's in the rack beside me, was looking at his three-month-old baby boy, his picture, when the scud hit. When we came in, he picked up the picture off the floor and gave me a look that seemed to say, I hope I will hold him again. We now just had a gas alert, and it's past midnight. We will not sleep. Nerves are on edge. And that's where my 22-year-old son found himself uh, in March of 2003. So he was involved in the initial invasion, and he wrote his girlfriend home a note saying, this is just to, to show that Jeffrey was already moodily, uh, mortally wounded emotionally when he came home. He said, I would never want to fight in a war again. I've seen and done enough horrible things to last a lifetime. I never thought that outside of a movie theater I would see what I have seen, but I did. And I'm going to go, be able to go back to normal life again, and best of all, you. Oh yeah, you were wondering what I wrote in the calendar for you? Well, I'll show it to you if you want, but it was my last letter in case I didn't make it home. I didn't want you to worry, but I wanted to emphasize it so if something did happen to me, you would want to see what it was and find it. I wrote that the night before we went into Nazaria with the 24th Marine Expeditionary Unit, who's the Marine Special Forces. We knew when we were told that we were going in with them, it was going to be really dangerous, so I wanted the letter written and I wanted you to know where it was. But we did a lot of risky missions that would take me a whole notebook to write about. So when Jeffrey came home in July, we thought everything was fine. He looked good. We knew, we knew nothing about what had happened over there and he didn't write anything to us that even indicated that there was a problem. So he came home in July. By December, he was starting to fall apart. We noticed he was drinking. He had anxiety. Uh, he was in college. He couldn't attend his classes. He wasn't eating. He was looking for camel spiders in his room with a little flashlight that he kept. Um, 
and things just continually went downhill. We couldn't get him to go to the VA because he was scared the Marines were gonna find out. And, and that, he felt, would not be a good thing. My husband was with him when we took him to the VA. Over at the VA, it took about six hours for him to be accessed. He was involuntarily committed. But again, as I said this morning, after admitting that he had three different ways to kill himself and that he had purchased a hose, they discharged him three and a half days later. We tried to bring him back a few days after that, and he wouldn't go in. He wouldn't go in voluntarily. And so they eventually just went back into the hospital. And at that point, that's when I gave up on the VA. Joyce tried to call, and she called the VA once. The VA never reached out to anybody after. And Joyce called the VA on June 15th of 2004 and told them, we're watching our son die slowly. They told us, call the vet center, and it took three days for an appointment to be made for Joyce. On June 21st, that evening, as I told you and shared with you before, he was in a total rage when I came home from work. And to the point that I didn't know what to do, and so I called the vet center. And this wonderful angel answered the phone, calmed me down, and got Jeff calmed down. But one of the things that the vet center records states is that Jeff told her. No one cares enough to help. That is a horrible indictment for a veteran or anyone to say about a health care system that was supposed to be there for them. And then he asked if he could sit in my lap and rock later that evening. And then in less than 24 hours, he was in my lap for the final time as I lowered his body from the beam. People need to help. People can't just talk the talk. And this is why these veterans who never knew Jeff have come to the plate and they're working to try to save lives of other veterans. We would just beg you, please, just care enough, just a little, so no one else has to see their son like we did. Thank you.